in, I don't know the date. I don't know the exact dates. I know in the early 2000s, my son Aaron was involved with Take Flight through Dean High School and went to Uruguay. And he came back, I remember him telling me with this pastor he met. And Aaron, uh, I think he did a year at university. It was after university he went there, there again. I think it was. Yeah, because you told your mother when you came back, you didn't go back to university. I remember that's how it worked. That's right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, so Aaron met Alejandro, and a friendship was uh, was made, and a, a work was started. Aaron's been back there a couple times since then, and we've befriended Alejandro, and we as a church have uh, supported him and his work for a few years, many years now. We've had Alejandro here before, and he happens to be passing through. And he is going to come to greet us and to just share with us a little bit from his part. So uh, let's give a warm Canadian welcome for Alejandro.
Okay. Do you have any other? That's yes. Canadian. Person. That's the Canadian. He is very good. Who? Oh. But I meant. I'm sorry. It's okay. Just as I also imitate Christ. Okay. Thank I you very much. Too. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, we believe God is sovereign, and uh, it was meant to be read the previous one, and I liked it very well, very much. Um, but this is what I want to say to you. Uh, this, this is what you have portrayed to us, maybe without noticing it, for the last years. I met Aaron, um, he was a guy, some years ago, he was a guy with the full support of a family, a church, and a Christian high school. And that's how we met in Uruguay. And certainly you sent him to the ends of the world. If you fly, you cannot go any further away than Uruguay if you go south. Unless you go to, you, know, you, you can even go further. But uh, for us, it is uh, every time we travel, it seems to be that everything is very far away. But, um, when, when we received the testimony and the work of people like Aaron and the Take Flight team and then Kaylee coming some years later, you go with a certain goal, but in a way you are conveying many things you do not notice and maybe we didn't notice at the beginning. But we have been trying to follow your steps. And this is what we have done, and I want you to meditate on this question. How much a church like yours can make an impact? And uh, it goes beyond what I can express tonight. But I want to say the following. We have taken your example of following Christ, because Christ was the first one to leave heaven, to come to the earth, and to be with you, with us. But then you took his example, and then we are taking the example of you imitating the Lord. Every year our church, out of your example, uh, does something that we call, the name of our, of our church is, is the Lighthouse Church. So we, we implement what we call Lighthouse in Mission. So we almost close church for a weekend and then we go from Friday up to Sunday night, we go minister in another church that is in need of something, you know. We go, we take the programs, the kids programs, the teenagers, the youth, we evangelize, we paint the temple, we fix the sign, we work the electricity, we do, we work day and night trying to wash the feet of other people. That is, that is something we learned from you and we saw you and now you inspired us to do the same. This last March, April, was our third one and we went 350 kilometers away from the church it was the, the furthest away we have gone so far and we went to the border with Brazil so actually this was the first international lighthouse mission because in that particular city you cross the street and you are in Brazil and you, you cross it back and you, you are in Uruguay so some of us were sleeping in Brazil some of us were sleeping in Uruguay but it was, we didn't realize, but then we, when we were evaluating, hey, this was our first international lighthouse emission. We went there, we, we did a lot of things, it was very exciting to have, we were 36 of us, we went, and uh, not everybody in church could go, but actually we didn't close the door on Sunday, but uh, there were just a bunch of people having a prayer meeting because there was nobody to preach the word, so we, we kept the church open, but uh, most of us were there, and uh, we went there to work, to help, to celebrate the anniversary of, of a brand new church over there, and we uh, brought with us $1,000 to invest. That was our budget, $1,000 to invest with them. We went a little bit beyond that, it was like $1,200, but it is okay, because we got excited. They work a lot with orphans, they do a wonderful job, and we we thought we were going to help and give, but I'm sure we discovered the same thing you discovered when you do something like that, that you feel you are the one that, that has been blessed. And because washing the feet of other people is great joy. We have learned that from you, that is the way you have
caused an impact in our lives and in our church. Every Sunday and every Wednesday, we pray for a country. We present a country. You have taught us to lift up our eyes and to look at other nations. So every Wednesday, we follow a book called Operation World that presents a, you know, an agenda to pray for all the countries in the world. So every Sunday, we take three or four minutes uh, of the main meeting, we present a country, we present one or two prayer requests, and then we split into small groups, and we pray. And if you are a newcomer, a visitor, or an unbeliever, you get educated right away that this small church in the midst of your way, but we are there and we are lifting up our eyes to the ends of the world. And we pray for Canada every now and then, and we pray for you every now and then. Not every Sunday, but every now and then we lift you up in our prayers as well. On Sundays we do the same, but we dedicate a little bit of more of time to, to pray for other countries. Next January is going to be a historical day for us because it is the first time in the history of our church that we will send a missionary couple abroad. Wow. We have a, a couple, uh, they are, she's, she's graduating as a teacher this year and he's, um, um, he works in marketing and, um, well I don't know how to call them English, but, uh, and they have uh, decided to forsake their jobs and they are going into missions for three years. Two years on board of Lagos Hope and one year in South Africa and part of that time in, in Argentina as well because they want to um, to see other, they want to see Christian schools because the, the dream of our church it's been to, to have a Christian school but we have not achieved that yet but we are preparing people so they will spend part of that time working as volunteers in some Christian schools that we have across the river in Argentina and they will take some experience and ideas to implement later on in our country. It is going to be a, a very important moment for us because we have never sent anybody abroad and uh, January next year we will send Cesar and Karina to Logos Hope. That is as a church member. As an aware, uh, because when, when you pray for us, when you support us, you are supporting a local pastor, but at the same time uh, a missionary that is working with a mission called Operation Mobilization. So as, a, as an OMR, uh, we visit a lot of churches. Two years ago, I visited or we visited about 90 churches, 90 churches throughout the year. That means an average of about two churches every weekend. And it is not just a visit of five minutes. We go, we preach, we teach, we try to mobilize. We spend time, quality time with them. So as we do that, we mobilize people. We try to inspire people to do the same you did with us. To mobilize them, to lift up their eyes and see the needs of other people. And uh, it is a blessing to see that some people are being mobilized and um, um, in, in the last year, I, I'll give you some statistics if you mind. In the last year, I've been invited to go to Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, and the Netherlands. Every time I am in one of those places by invitation, you are there with me. That's the reason I can go. I tell you, sometimes I get a little bit frustrated. I travel long hours, I go to a conference. Some people, they are good, they treat you very well, like here, in some other cases, they don't even give you an offering for a coffee at the airport. That's okay, uh, but you are there, because it, it is not because of what we get out of that, it is because of what we give out of that. The second time I went to the Netherlands this, this year, uh, it was the second time, and uh, I went to, to minister, but one of the reasons I wanted to go uh, again, was the first time I just went from the airport to the conference room, the conference center, and then back to the airport and back home. So this time I said I will spend two days in the Netherlands because I want to go to two places. I wanted to go to the house of Corrie ten Boom. I don't know if you know her story. I wanted to go there because that lady caused a huge impact in my life through, his, through her books when I was uh, a teenager. 
And the second one was that I wanted to visit the Museum of Rembrandt. That was, uh, was I, I like drawing and you know painting. So and that opened up the doors for me to 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 be in, in both places. But what really caused an impact to me was to go to the Corinthian Bruce House. I didn't know it was a museum. It is a museum. Now, this, have you ever been there? Anybody? What an experience. You know, one block away from, from her house, there is a huge church. Huge. I mean, it is, it is a, I believe it is evangelical, but it is more dead than alive. It is a huge building. The house of Corrie Boone, only one block away from that place, it is a tiny house in comparison to that big church. But the lives, that small house, keeps on impacting, you know, 20 people at a time making a tour every two hours, you know, going to all the rooms, listening to the story, crying or trying to refrain your, your tears, like in my case, but hugely impacted by her testimony. A small house, a small home that keeps on impacting many, many, many lives. When I thought of that, I think of, you know, I think of your church. Some of you may, may say, this is, this is a very, for us in your way, it is a pretty large church. Our church is much smaller than this one. But if you compare yourself to other churches in Canada, you may say your church is very tiny. It may be that in Canada you have churches of thousands of people. To us, they don't mean anything. But you do, because your lives and your prayers like, uh, and your failure and your support impact us, impact our lives, our homes, and uh, frees us so that we can convey the message of the gospel to many other people. So, brothers, as a, as a church member, as a pastor, you are there every Sunday in many things. In every mission we do, we go, uh, we invest, we say, you set the example for us. You were the first group ever to come to our church. We were only, I don't know, about four months old when the Take Flight team came to our church. You set the example. Now we are following that example. As a November, I have the chance to go and preach and mobilize in many churches within Uruguay and abroad. And you are there as well. So, I remember one of the films that impacted my life the most is the, the one Saving Private Ryan. Have you ever watched that one? It is very <laughs> emotional for a very, you know, it is not maybe for, for, for ladies that get very, <laughs> because it is, it is very cruel. But I remember, I will, I will do something horrible, I will tell the ending of the movie. <laughs> so, but, um, this Ryan, he was saved by a platoon of eight people, and uh, seven or six out of the eight died trying to save one person. Then at the end, the captain himself, interpreted by Tom Hanks, he was about to die, and he had Private Ryan next to him, and he grabs him, and he says, earn it, meaning that Seven people die for you. Don't make of your life a waste. And the movie ends with Private Ryan going to a military cemetery in which you can see the grass is cut very, very neat. You won't see my yard that neat. But uh, it was very neat and many crosses, many crosses, all the same. But he's looking for one cross. He's going to the to the place in which the captain is buried and he goes with his family and then he talks to that captain and says there was not one single day that I didn't think of what you said to me and then he turns he sees his wife and says tell me that I have lived a good life and she smiles and says yes you have well I, I bring this in front of you because I we consider when, when you support someone like, like me or like our church or OM I think the best way to honor your sacrifice is to say 
Your offerings, your prayers have not been a waste. And we have tried hard to honor you. And uh, so far we are not perfect. We are very far away from being perfect. But what a joy it is to see people come to the Lord. What a joy it is to see people really lifting up their eyes, leaving their comfort zone and going two blocks away or 25,000 kilometers away. Um, so thank you. We praise God. We praise God for you, for your lives. And uh, we can tell so far God has used us, you know, us together as a team. Um, in terms of, uh, of needs, we want to come to an end. Uh, we want you to, to consider praying for us. Um, the last five years have been pretty rough or tiring for me because I'm a very limited person and my head is very limited for the many things I'm doing sometimes. So I get tired and uh, I notice because there's a level of frustration that sometimes it goes up very quickly and I say, oh, I'm tired. So uh, I'm thinking of having a break. Um, I've seen it in, in pastoral life or in, in missionary life. I've seen people taking a break when they are causing too much trouble. And uh, I don't want to take a break when I'm causing a lot of trouble. So I want to take it before I get to that point. But I'm tired and I'm thinking of having some uh, uh, months off from church next year. And uh, to focus only mainly in OM and uh, some of the things we are doing over there. And um, in terms of uh, another need, we need more people to come help us, especially in some specific areas. And uh, as a family, we need to renovate our vehicle and we are praying for another vehicle, which we need because we, we use those vehicles a lot in our place and all over the country. And sometimes if we have a vehicle that is good enough, we go to other countries as well, like Argentina and Brazil. I have to go to Argentina at the end of the, uh, June. I have to go to Brazil twice this year and I have to come back to Argentina in October. And uh, I do all that by bus and I can go alone. But if we had a proper vehicle, I can take some other people with me and uh, it would be a, an awesome opportunity for other people to come along and minister as well. So those are mainly the things. And uh, something, something that I forgot to say, but it is very important. I go every church, and uh, if you work with me, you will know this. Uh, and people that go with me, they are tired of me saying this over and over and over. I go to every church and I say that I want to challenge young people when they finish high school to dedicate at least one year completely to the Lord. I'm not talking about OM. If you, if you come to OM, great. But I'm not talking about OM. I'm, take, I'm talking about dedicating one year to serve God, either in your local church, in your city, or very far away from home. That is what we want. We have four kids. We want that for all of them. And we are, you know, talking them. I don't know how to say this in English, but we are convincing. We are being subtle, and every now and then we we put that on the table. And uh, so far, we didn't have any any nose. They are very young, of course. But uh, we want to make sure that they know we are serious about this. It would be a, an honor for us. That is precisely what we learned when Aaron and the kids, they finished high school and they went to Europe. Um, and we want to follow that. In every single church I go, if I go, if, I'm, if you invite me, you know, that is going to come sooner or later. It is a privilege to dedicate at least one year to the Lord. And we have seen, like a missionary wave racing up. It's not big, it's not, you know, amazing. But there is more awareness and that there are more people willing to go and to imitate the Lord and to imitate you. So, what can I say? Thank you very much. I don't want to go any further. But um, just to give you an idea of how much a church like yours, what you're doing, can impact 
a life, a church, and a life that we can only imagine. We don't know how far the repercussion can go. So thank you very much, and thank you for allowing me once more with this uh, terrible English to, or with a lot of accent and the things that I know what you're thinking. He should have said this instead of that. Or, well, thank you. I haven't thought once. Okay. You are too gracious. Thank you very much. Too crazy. Yeah, well, gracious. So, thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? What did you went down whatever year it was? And um, we helped in what? Building, purchasing or building? Uh, me, purchasing. Purchasing. Building, I. Uh, well, we my, my office. What did you do? We didn't do any like hands on. No, no, no. Yes, when Kayla and I were there, we helped you with your office. Uh, you did the original church property, but you did The original church property? Well, we helped. Just the, the both property, property, both, both. Oh, and the containers. Maybe the first uh, uh, yeah, property yeah. and the containers. The same thing. Okay. All right. And it, it's an honor. You know, you know us. You know our size, and, and God's graced us, and um, to have you on our on our uh, our wall of people we support, uh, we're honored. We consider ourselves co-laborers. We thank you for what you do. We thank you for the sacrifice. You have made the calling of God in your life. If you've never read The Hiding Place by Corey Tendum, I think it should be required reading for every believer. I do. And Alexander suggested it to you a while ago, like a year ago, I don't know when I'm thinking about it. But Corey Tendum, her story, really, it's it's an incredible, incredible story. And um, I didn't know that she had such an impact on mm -hmm. her life. Indeed. My mother, uh, she, she got old books, and I read the first one. And that book was given to her as a gift from another missionary. Oh, really? They just keep on getting it. Yeah. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians, he says, the things that you receive, the things that you've, you've uh, learned, the things you've seen and heard, these do. This is the same one who said, imitate me as I imitate God. He goes, these do. And if you do these things, we learn from guys like Alejandro and we rub off on each other. And, and it says, the God of peace will be. That's why we need one another. That's why we need guys uh, like Alejandro and to support one another. So thank you. Thank you.